God bless you. Welcome back to the triage room, Jehovah Rapha, where sin is the sickness and Jesus Christ is the cure. How to win the battle of the mind. Now, before I start, let me just give you some background to how this video uh, originated. It actually started uh, from a bedside conversation I had with my, my dear wife in the wee hours of the morning before we um, got up to go get ourselves ready for work. Um, this conversation kind of organically began. Um, we were just sharing with each other some of the biggest battles um, we had in times past and we kind of concluded that the biggest battles that we've ever had were the battles we had with ourselves you know the battle of the mind and um, my wife kind of emphasized how important it was for us as a married couple um, to be so uh, sensitive during heated moments not to say negative negative things to each other because those things can act as triggers um, to fuel those internal battles in our mind and it got me thinking that if that's happening to us as a, a born-again Christian couple then what is happening to other people out there so that's why I made this video um, psychology is actually the scientific study of uh, the mind and the behavior of the mind which tries to look at why we think behave and uh, feel the way we do and in this video I'm going to try to mix um, psychology with the Word of God um, in the hope that you know we as Christians can apply these things to walk in faith and also in victory because oftentimes many Christians on the surface you know it seems that everything is going okay but up here you know there's some battles that we're losing day by day because what goes on inside our minds you know will be played out in our everyday Proverbs 23 verse 7 says for as he thinketh in his heart so is he what we think about ourselves what is downloaded in our minds is played out in our everyday. And as I said, my wife, um, as I said, highlighted how important it was that we are mindful, mindful what we say to each other, you know, or rather what we pour into each other. There's a saying, um, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never harm me. That is not true. That is not true. Because words are so powerful. A negative word said, you know, in your childhood could be the very thing that hinders you in adulthood. Someone could say to you that you're, you're good for nothing. You will amount to nothing when you were five. And now you're 45. And you can't get past that word. Because that word has somehow like a seed has been planted in your cerebrum you know and it has uh, formed deep roots and roots have grown into a tree that has borne fruits and you can't shake that word perhaps it was said to you by an uncle or a dad or a mom or somebody said it to you back in the day a teacher in your primary or elementary school and you can't get past that even in adulthood so words are powerful very very powerful so we have to be mindful what we say or pour into um, people we claim to love especially uh, children if you're a parent a guardian auntie or uncle we have to be so mindful of what we pour into them because that could shape their futures positively or negatively if you recall the story of uh, Gideon and God called uh, Gideon and Gideon um, showed his mindset when he said to God I'm from the smallest tribe 
uh, of Israel, the Manasseh tribe. And in the smallest tribe, I am or my family is the least. Okay, we are small, we are poor. Um, Gideon was saying to, to, to God or rather the angel that God sent that I think you've got it wrong. I'm not your man. He had a, a, a poverty stricken uh, mind. He had a low esteem uh, mindset because of his situation, his environment. And oftentimes, we as Christians, um, we can uh, exclude ourselves from ministry, from the call of God, because of our backgrounds. Perhaps our, um, we see ourselves as less because of the color of our skin. We see ourselves as less because we haven't got any major qualifications. You know, um, we didn't get any certification at school, at college, we didn't go to university. You know, we don't see ourselves as, you know, like the Joneses because of that. We haven't got two pennies to rub together. So we say, Lord, no, 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 no. You must have got it wrong. You must have got it wrong because I'm from a, a nowhere place. And, and, and oftentimes it's a mindset thing. And God had to remind Gideon that he knows uh, the end from the beginning. And it was irrelevant what uh, Gideon thought about himself. It was more so what God thought about him. And God called him a mighty man of valor. And there are many mighty men and women of valor out there who don't see themselves as God sees them. They're too busy looking at their environment, too busy looking at their financial situation, too busy worried about uh, what they see looking back at them in the mirror. And so limit themselves in their mind. Powerful. Listen, on a personal note, I'm a product of a nuclear family. I was raised by a single mother um, who did her very best to raise me and my, my brother and my sister um, on little means. You know, she had many, many jobs, um, but we were happy, we were fed, we were clothed. Um, unfortunately for her, you know, she was in a, a very, um, how can I put it, an abusive um, marriage. Um, we as children saw that close up, you know, although she tried to shield us from all that um, domestic uh, violence whenever it, it erupted, we were unfortunately in the midst of it. Um, and I can't say um, that it hasn't affected my adulthood. There are times um, when I'm watching a certain type of film or I hear something on the radio. And as my wife said earlier, that uh, it can act as a trigger, you know, and all of a sudden I feel a bit down and a bit, you know, depressed based on the film or the thing I've heard because deep within my cerebrum you know is that trauma of what happened you know all those many decades ago it the mind is it's a supercomputer you know that soaks up information knowledge like a sponge it can soak up good and it can soak up bad and if you place a, 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 a vulnerable child in a negative, uh, abusive environment, you know, say at age four or five, by the time that child gets to its early teens, you know, trust me, that child will be acting out. That child will be a, a menace to society and perhaps in adulthood become him or herself an abuser because of what that child was exposed to the mind is a powerful thing listen to what Romans 12 verse 2 says as a way of being transformed in the way you think it says this and be not conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. What the Bible is not saying is that um, we all need to go and get a, a brain transplant, you know, get a new 
fresh brain and start to download nice new stuff into it no 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 it's saying with this old mind that we have there's a way that we can begin to as it were get rid of the old stuff the harmful stuff and begin to fill it with good stuff okay and that's called renewal and how do we renew our minds you know um, first and foremost when we come to the knowledge of Jesus Christ through repentance that's actually the first steps of our minds um, becoming renewed we have a new uh, way of thinking a new outlook to life you know um, not conforming to world values and world views but it's seeking and um, uh, the the will of God for our lives okay seeking the way of God for our lives that's the first steps of being transformed let me give you some practical advice um, before I, I, I close uh, how I personally cope with uh, the battles in in my mind and trust me we all have battles you know I'd be lying to you if I said that um, I have everything under control you know I have my battles but this is how I I, pre I cope with those battles on a, a practical level um, I said before that our brains is a supercomputer like a sponge it's a source of information um, so you have to be mindful of, of, of what you surround um, yourself with or who you surround yourself with I always try to um, surround myself with as many positive people as I possibly can not possible but I try to all the time people who feed me with good stuff rather than people that just take 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 and drain me um, so that's a start you know be mindful of the friends that you keep um, another thing is be mindful of what you watch what you read what you listen to um, I have an audio Bible app let me see if I can find it on my phone and show you um, it's a really good app actually I'd recommend um, everyone get a audio Bible app uh, for themselves um, trust me I can't find it now where's my Bible audio app as you can see I don't know if you can see it there in the corner um, and where possible I listen to my Bible audio app practically every single day um, when I'm traveling into work I put my headphones on these ones and I just um, leave it on perhaps a, a one of the Gospels and it just plays 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 and sometimes I, I nap on the bus knowing that the Word of God is going into my subconscious by word have I hid in my heart that I've not seen against thee. you know it just goes down 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 um, so I would recommend that you not only read the Word of God not only speak the Word of God but also listen to the Word of God okay let it saturate you know um, your 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 mind let it saturate your mind you know fill your mind with the Word of God that's another way of beginning that renewal process okay that's another one um, Psalms 119 verses 130 says the entrance of thy word gives light you know it means that God's word brings uh, illumination and understanding even to those who are simple or lack knowledge um, I try my best to avoid listening to uh, most secular music again it's a hard thing to do because you're surrounded by it um, I try to listen to as many um, gospel music as I can um, ever so often I may listen to some um, purely uh, music maybe some jazz or something like that um, but 99.9% .9 of my music preferences are gospel worship praise okay um, some secular music have um, what I find negative uh, subliminal messaging that if you hear it time and time again it will make you depressed trust me you know there's some music out there if you listen to it long enough you just feel like just harming yourself right so um, for your mind avoid it altogether cut it out of your your spiritual diet um, and two more things I think sometimes we overlook um, as as Christians one is finding a good person you can share 
your innermost secrets with all right someone who will um not uh give up your confidence you know they're not going to share what you've told them they'll keep it nice and safe and they'll pour into you um and the, the last thing is meditation meditation is key and i'm not talking about yoga or transcendental meditation no those things are outside of the will of god i'm talking about meditating on the word of god itself philippians 4 verses 8 says finally brethren whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest whatsoever things are just whatsoever things are pure whatsoever things are lovely whatsoever things are of good report if there be any virtue and if there be any praise think on these things think in that instance means meditate on these things so to even begin to win the battle of the mind you know I would say apply those practical things I've mentioned um, but first you know begin to seek to have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ you know that is really where the journey you know of being transformed of having your minds renewed begins by having that relationship with Jesus Christ and you'll find that slowly but surely your mind will begin to be transformed renewed you'll have a new way of thinking you know even in the midst of negativity you'll think positive you won't be impacted by what people say you know people sometimes throw these negative grenades at you uh, maybe the way you're dressed maybe the way you speak you know they say all manner of things if you have a renewed mind water off a duck's back that's how you'll take the grenades they throw at you you know they say something bad you say you know <laughs> I know who I am okay I know who I am in God so away with you I hope this has helped somebody in a, in a practical way you know to begin to win win their battle of the mind may God bless you may God keep you until next time dear viewer if you've been challenged by this message and would like to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior Please pray this prayer with me. Dear Jesus, I confess with my mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord and believe in my heart that God raised him from the dead. Come into my heart and forgive me of all my sins. In Jesus' name, Amen. Congratulations, you've been born again. My advice to you would be to find a Bible-believing fellowship to continue your walk with God.